just to cover for anyone listening who's never heard of of the carnivore diet, what are the fun, fundamental principles of the carnivore diet? Yeah, so so carnivore eating is there's 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 lots of different approaches, and I guess the way I think about it is there's different tiers of of carnivore based on how restrictive uh, you want that you you want to be or how much you want to eliminate. So from from the most restrictive implementation of a carnivore diet would be something like only eating ruminant like beef ruminant muscle meat ruminant organ meat and salt and water so that's called the lion diet um after michaela peterson who is jordan peterson's daughter who had a Mm -hmm. uh, cured a range of uh, autoimmune juvenile arthritis symptoms um, with a very strict approach like that. So that's that's the most strict. And then below that, you've got other tiers of um, of carnivore. So animal based ketogenic diet. So really high fat a- uh, animal animal based keto diet. So um, very very high animal fat from suet or from other forms of animal derived adipose like fat tissue um and then a little and then protein but there's in a smaller percentage so that's specifically designed to keep people highly highly ketogenic um and then then below that you've just got standard type more general carnivore diets which is including things like eggs and including things like dairy and to seafood everything of just a animal origin and then below that you've got things like what dr paul saladino advocates for now which is you know, animal based, but it's essentially a 90, 80 to 90% um, meat, animal meat and, and dairy, but also including, mm. you know, fruit and honey. And I, I really wouldn't call that a carnival diet at all. The, and that, the, the, the point though, for your listeners is that each one of those uh, approaches is, a, is appropriate for a different person at a different time. And I would also make the point that the most restrictive carnivore diets are, I think of them as therapeutic protocols. So they're actually a treatment prescription for people who are really unwell with, you know, severe autoimmune disease. Um, they might have quite severe epilepsy. They might be maintaining a deep ketogenic state for, um, for to keep cancers in, in remission. So, so those are more therapeutic protocols. And usually after a period of time, what I see is that um, or how I think about it is often that's enough to help people heal and then they can reintroduce foods and move down that list to a less restrictive um, version of an of a carnivore or low carb uh, and then you know perhaps even introduce vegetables if that's what they really love to do and and the point Rasmus that I want to make to your listeners is that this isn't the ideological opposite of veganism or at least that's not how i see it and i don't think that it's not about um you know how how uh loyal can you be to the doctrine or to the carnivore dogma uh it's about what is the best approach for that person and what makes them thrive the most so um it's a it's a fluid transition and and at the moment so i've gone through phases of being very very strict carnivore and uh, having healed all my my health issues, um, I'm, I'm I'm basically eighty to ninety per, percent uh, carnivore. And if I'm going over to someone's house and they've prepared, you know, some sauerkraut or some some kind of vegetable dish, like I'll have a little bit. Um, I won't prepare it for myself, but I've I've guess I've I've gone to got to a point where I can tolerate um, plant more plant food if I if I feel like it but um yeah i hope hope that makes sense for um for your listeners 